This video of the McDonald Observatory is not in chronological order of our visit. Our first time here was for the star party at night. And then the following day, we took a guided tour to view the Harlan J. Right Smith Telescope, picture. which was phenomenal. And then following that guided tour, we checked out the museum and then took part in the solar viewing, here, which happens right in a theater and actually them. was Grayson, quite here. educational and very interesting. We loved every bit of McDonald Observatory, and we recommend all okay, three tours, because why not? All right, thank you. All right, Rachel. The visitor center is equipped with a gift shop, restrooms of course, and a small exhibit hall that was fun for both kids and adults. Here are a lot of hands-on activities to show light pollution, the different color of the stars and which color is hotter. They even have an iron meteorite that was found in 1903 and weighs 1,530 pounds. You could definitely spend a little bit of time in here. If you don't have a tour and you still want to come check this out, you can check out the exhibit hall and, and you know the gift shop, but then also you can go outside and you can walk around the giant telescopes that they have. I don't think they leave any of them open for you to go and see. Um, but walking around them still feels pretty surreal. Feels good. It's not that hot. <laughs> yes, isn't that beautiful? Half of size of the Milky Way. See that? There's somewhere on the world. <laughs> In a theater. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's pretty far away, almost 93 million miles away from us. But let's put that into perspective. Let's say we take a road trip to the sun. Get in our car, wear our favorite snacks and movies, and just drive to the sun 100 miles an hour nonstop. No bathroom breaks, no slushy breaks, no buckies, none of that. How long do you think that trip will take if anyone wants to try guessing? Forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> and other guesses, if not, she wins by default. <laughs> I she win. can't beat me. Thousand How years. How much? Thousand years. A thousand years, good guess. Yeah. 20, yeah. what? Thousand. 30? But uh, like, like a days, months, years, hours? 30 seconds. Uh, one day? <laughs> one day. So we got good rates going from one day to forever. So the actual answer of taking it, oh, yeah. About one billion years. A thousand years, not a good years. guess? 930,000 years. 930,000 years, not a good guess. So the actual answer is about 106 years will be the trip. Still a very long time, but thankfully not forever, a thousand years, oh, but you gotta time. make sure you have your enough snacks for that trip. Uh, only takes light about eight and a just half minutes though. <laughs> That's just how fast light moves. So in these, this building, we have three solar telescopes. So these telescopes have special filters in front, which block out most of the sun's light, like 99.9% of it. And the back of each telescope, we have a camera attached that can just get pictures and videos of the sun. And we can access these cameras remotely to get a live view of the sun. Now, sadly, the clouds have been coming back, so not sure if there's a live view, but we'll give it a shot. Ta-da! Some of y'all don't look that impressed. Looks like a tortilla. It's yellow. Yeah, it kind of looks like a potato, it's kind of like yellow. Yeah, so the sun is a yellow white star, while it looks yellowish here. And when you think of the sun, you usually think like a big ball of fire, stuff flying all over the place, not a weird, bumpy looking ball. But that's how the sun looks like, at least to our, our eyes. Right now you're seeing the sun in what we call the white light, the type of light our eyes can pick up. So if we could look at the sun and not be blinded by it, 
you'd see something like this. Your own signal looks kind of like clouds here on the surface. We call those solar filaments. Sometimes the sun's material leaves the surface, looks around, and goes back in. You're also seeing some clouds on the edge. We call these solar prominences. Here's a really cool looking prominence. Now, how tall do you think that prominence is in planet Earth sizes? If anyone wants to try guessing. Yes. 15. 15 years, good guess. Any other guesses? Wait, what are you guessing? Two Earths? Two Earths, another good guess. Oh, how tall this is in planet Earth sizes? Yep, see you hang back there. Oh, you're going to say two as well? So you two are tied with two Earths? I'm going to go three. You're going with three? Um, 50. 50? Well, so we got two Earths and 50 Earths. We got a good range going. So before I give the answer, a bit of a hint. Do you all see this fuzzy layer around the edge of the sun? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is called the spicule layer. It's about half a planet Earth tall. So this prize is about two and a half times taller than planet Earth. <laughs> so the both of you would win the prize. So here on the sun in that white light view here, the type of light our eyes can see. So we have the granulation, the grainy texture, and the sunspot. So at first glance, sun surface looks almost solid. That if we were to have a really strong spacesuit, you could probably run around for a little bit. But the sun is not a solid, it's actually a gas, a superheated gas. And not only is it a superheated gas, that gas is always in constant motion. So here's how the sun surface looks like. For this one, over a few hours, and for this one, about half an hour. The waves move might seem kind of familiar, maybe like a lava lamp or a pot of boiling water back home. Driving up to McDonald Observatory on this day was fascinating because we were below the clouds, and then we saw it getting cloudier and cloudier as we got higher and higher until eventually we were literally in the clouds. What you see is rolling clouds, and it was just fascinating for all of us to experience. The kids were just blown away saying how they were in the clouds and they could feel the clouds. It was pretty cool. Visitors may drive or ride the observatory shuttle. Shuttle priority is given to those in RVs or pulling a trailer and in our case we were pulling a trailer. The tour then continues to the summit of Mount Folks and the Hobby Eberly Telescope, HET. At the HET, you'll learn more about the telescope's unique design and the current research done here. Unfortunately, we could not see the Hobby Eberly telescope because it was shut down the day that we came. Prior to our visit, they had a lightning strike which took out the elevator, so we skipped that one. This guided tour typically runs about an hour and a half to two hours long. The Harlan J. Smith Telescope was constructed in 1966 to 1968. The Smith Telescope has a 2.7 meter or 107 inch mirror, which was the third largest in the world when built. The telescope is used every clear night of the year. people can see in front of y'all, so stand in front of us. In order to move the telescope, you type in the coordinates of the galaxy or certain star you want to see, and then the telescope begins to move first. Just like this, although it's fast forward a lot here because it is kind of slow. That sounds like what you would expect. <laughs> oh, wow.
see when we get out. Once the telescope was in position, the entire top half of the dome turned to meet its location. We could not open it because you can only open it at night. If you open it during the daytime, you would be set on fire thanks to all the magnifying glasses in there. That's right, you would be set ablaze, and we definitely did not want to go down burning in a ring of fire. <laughs> you see that yellow thing? Uh huh. Yeah. That is our 20 ton bridge crane. We choose to lift any sort of heavy thing on the dome. With the instruments with it. The star party was a little bit different than I had anticipated. We were in an amphitheater for the first hour for star presentation. He had a laser pointer and he pointed out different constellations and told us the names. That was actually pretty informative and interesting to see. Um, but the telescopes kind of lacked what I was expecting. Um, you know, I was kind of expecting the, the galaxy pictures that you see with all the beautiful colors and such like that, but these are not that kind of telescopes. So what you did see was a bunch of bright dots in the telescope, and they told us what it was. The coolest thing that we saw through the telescope, though, was the moon. The moon was actually really neat because you could see the craters on there. So if you're going to visit um, McDonald Observatory for a star party, then I definitely would pay attention to the moon phases. And um, you want to go during a new moon because it's still really dark out. You can see more stars that way. And then you can also enjoy seeing parts of the moon through the telescopes. I want to welcome, want to welcome everybody here tonight uh, to the McDonald Observatory and our visitor center. And also welcome to the University of Texas. Um, you are on a UT campus right now. You may or may not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but my name is Joe, and I'll be your host uh, this evening. Uh, before we start, how many here tonight are from Texas? Woo! Anybody not from Texas? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> not at all. There are no restaurants readily available, so we planned ahead and packed a picnic. There were plenty of tables available. Check out that gigantic J. Helen Smith telescope. It's huge. And then there it is again. That was really awesome to see. We enjoyed our visit to McDonald Observatory and taking all three tours. It would really put in perspective of the magnitude of this place. If you are planning to come check this place out, then we stayed at Hotel Olympia and absolutely loved it. It's not a far drive from here. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, because why not?